Hey, what's going on, Miami Dolphins fans? Welcome back to the Fins Up Network. It's Ben Morgan, and in today's video, we're going to be doing a little bit of stock up, stock down for Miami Dolphins players as we get set for week one's matchup against the New England Patriots. Now, it's my current plan to release this type of video midweek leading up to each regular season game, basically as a way for us to keep tabs on our current players in regards to who's doing well, who's been stepping up their game, as well as maybe who hasn't been performing quite as well and who needs to step their game up. So today's video is going to be a little bit trickier since we haven't had any regular season game action yet, but I'm going to improvise today, factor in a few different components from the offseason to develop my stock up, stock down. But that's where you play a role as well. I want to hear your stock ups, stock downs leading up to Sunday's game against the New England Patriots. So drop those in the comments. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you are getting subscribed. But let's start right away with the stock up. Jalen Waddle, because the other half of the wide receiver duo that Tyreek Hill said is going to make defensive backs scared shitless is finally expected back for some in-game action. As you know, we didn't see Jalen Waddle play a single preseason snap. He was basically limited to individual drills throughout the last couple of weeks of training camp as well. But as of right now, it sounds like he is set, good to go for that matchup against the Patriots. Now, I'm not going to go into a bunch of details and talk about what that combo of Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill, what they're capable of, the stress that they put on defense. I already made an entire video about that exact thing. If you haven't checked it out, so I will put the link in the description below. So make sure you are checking that out. But going back to Waddle here, right as we were learning that the team was going to take this precautionary approach, um, basically saying like, you know what, we're going to sit him out, make sure he's 100% for week one. Mike McDaniels asked, you know what, who's a player that has taken a big step from OTAs to training camp? And his answer was Jalen Waddell. So a guy that we already thought was a stud was even significantly better in the coach's eyes from OTAs to training camp. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign up for all of that with Jalen Waddell. And you know what? Part of me thinks that, yes, Jalen Waddell does have this injury. We want to make sure he gets healthy. There's also a little bit of skepticism in me that thinks, you know what? Mike McDaniel says, I've got the cheat code. I've got Jalen Waddell. I've got Tyreek Hill. I'm going to do every single thing in my power to ensure that Jalen Waddell is 100% for the start of the season. So give me stock up on Jalen Waddell. And you know what? Let's see that Waddle. Let's see that touchdown dance uh, a time or two on Sunday against the Patriots as well. Let's jump into a stock down. Because the cornerbacks, because I think panic set in for quite a few of us when we learned that Byron Jones was going to start the season on the PUP list. Four weeks without your second best cornerback when shutdown cornerbacks are arguably what makes this defense go. It's what makes it tick at least in my opinion, in regards to that zero blitz scheme, because we spent the entire offseason wondering what other cornerback is going to emerge throughout the offseason. Trill Williams does it to an extent. We lose him to the knee injury. We sign Mackenzie Alexander. That experiment lasts one week. We land him on IR. Keon Crossan starts to flash here and there. He gets a little bit dinged up. We've just been cursed right now at the cornerback position. So you're looking at Xavier and Howard on one boundary, and we're going to have to see what they do with Nick Needham. Do they move him to the boundary? Do they keep him at slot corner? But then you're looking at Keon Crossan, Elijah Campbell, Noah Igbenogany, Cater Kohu as one of those cornerbacks that needs to emerge and that are going to be on the field quite often for these first four weeks. And we're going to see on Sunday as to kind of who gets the first crack at these added additional snaps. But you can't help but think stock down when you originally go from Xavier Howard, Byron Jones, Nick Needham, and Trill Williams to now you're looking at Xavier Howard, Nick Needham, and then is it is it is it Crossan? Is it Campbell? Is it Iggy? Is it Kohu? We're definitely going to have to keep an eye on that Sunday and see how it goes because that is one position right now outside of offensive line that really has me a little bit shaky. Let's bring things back up with a stock up here. And that's Teron Armstead. And you might be thinking, Teron Armstead. Guy didn't even take a single preseason snap. What are we doing here? 
Well, guess what? Him starting at left tackle on Sunday in a meaningful game is the exact reason why he is all the way stocked up. We're finally going to get to see like the the 1A or 1B offseason prize possession, depending on how you value him versus Tyreek. But we're finally going to get to see him play in some action. Obviously, he's on the left side. Still got a couple of question marks on the right side with Austin Jackson. But when a guy like Teron Armstead is healthy and on the field, he is the type of tackle that we as fans should literally have no worries about. Plug and play. He's just going to get the job done. Super athletic. Moves great in the run game. That dude is a brick wall in pass protection. He's literally the player that we have just been making these desperate pleas for ever since Tua Tungavailoa has come on the football field. We've needed a guy like this forever. Now, in regards to Tua, we've seen some spurts over the last two seasons. We saw it in week three of preseason. But when Tua has a pocket and he can have that extra quarter of a second for a play to develop, for him to make sure he's got the solid footing and just simply deliver a throw, having time to simply deliver a throw, he can be money. He can be extremely, extremely accurate. And this is the extra time that a guy like Teron Armstead provides. And not even, not to mention like lining up alongside Liam Eikenberg and how Teron Armstead's presence alone should help the play of our left guard as well. But I'm excited to see this offense. I'm excited to see Tua with a competent left tackle. Looking forward to see how this offensive line gels and comes together now that we're actually going to get to see in-game action with the starting five up front. Let's do one more uh, stock down here. And it's coaching experience. And I'm going to start by saying I don't want this taken out of context. I don't want this taken in the wrong way. And maybe, honestly, the phrase stock down when I'm describing this one isn't probably the best terminology. But I've got a thought regarding coaching that I think plays a factor heading into Sunday's game. And I've alluded to this in some of my previous videos recently as well. But I'll go into a little bit more detail here. Because while I think the Miami Dolphins are the superior team, they're the better team on paper, they should win this game on Sunday against the Patriots. If there's one advantage I think the Patriots do have coming into this game, it is coaching. And that is meant, like I said, that is meant as no slight whatsoever to Mike McDaniel and the staff that he has assembled. I personally am so impressed with Mike McDaniel. I am super happy with the guys that he has brought in on the coaching staff. But you can't sit there and tell me that there's at least not at least some little advantage to having a head coach with over 20 plus years of head coaching experience versus a guy that's going to be a head coach in an NFL regular season game literally for the first time. And like I said, end of the day, I do think talent on the field trumps what you can do in coaching. So I still think Miami should and will win this game. But I do think Belichick will have some answers for this Mike McDaniel creative offense. And it's not, here's this one. It's not like we're just going to be able to give them the warm butter treatment. And if you're not quite sure what the warm butter treatment is, it's just carving right through. A lot of people out there right now are thinking that we're just going to carve through this defense. The warm butter treatment. But I don't think that's going to be the case. Look, Bill Belichick has coached against speed before. He's coached against Tua before. He's coached against, obviously, Jalen Waddell and Tyreek Hill before. He knows what these guys are capable of. He knows the stresses they can put on a defense. So I don't know that I necessarily see a runaway in regards to the scoreboard, as like I've seen a couple other people predicting already. But rather, I think Miami's going to have to get it done in numerous facets of the game, offense, defense, special teams. So honestly, I hate to end on a cliche like that, but I, I, I think that is the truth. Plus, I think I saved myself earlier with the uh, the warm butter treatment. So I, I think things kind of equal out. I bring in my warm butter treatment, gets canceled out by a cliche at the end. But end of the day, the math works out. I think I'm all right. But that is what I have as well. I want to hear your stock ups. Stocks down, heading into week one against the Patriots. So make sure you drop those in the comments. Next video, I'm going to be back with three keys to victory for the Miami Dolphins over the New England Patriots. So get subscribed, turn on notifications so you can check that out as soon as it drops. That is my time for today, Miami Dolphins fans. And until next time, fins.